This is your CBS 46 News Update, brought to you by West Shore Home. I'm Rick Fulbaum, a judge granting Officer Garrett Rolfe a $500,000 bond with some strict conditions. He will have an ankle monitor. Mr. Rolfe is going to have an ankle monitor at his expense. He will be fitted for that prior to his release. He will be subject to being monitored at all times. Rolf is charged in the police killing of Rayshard Brooks, and Rolf will also have a curfew, cannot have weapons, and can't talk to any other officers. A person was killed when a car ran into the emergency room at Piedmont Hospital in Atlanta today. Four other people were hurt. Police tell us a woman in her 70s pulled in, lost control of her car, hit another car, and then veered off and right into the entrance of the emergency room waiting area. One person was hit and pronounced dead at the scene. Circumstances that led to her actually having this accident, we, we're not sure what they are, and it's still under investigation. The driver was not hurt in the crash. Georgia has a new budget. Governor Brian Kemp signing the $26 billion measure this morning. The budget cuts nearly a billion dollars in funding for kindergarten through 12th grade. The measure includes more than a billion dollars for construction, maintenance, and improvement projects, including roads and bridges to schools and campus facilities. Now to the coronavirus crisis and some brand new health numbers just out, showing a spike of new cases here in Georgia, not letting up. Today, nearly 1,900 new cases in just the past 24 hours. And to help put that in perspective, take a look at this graph. Today's number of new cases is pretty consistent with what we've seen over the last week, each day adding at least 1,700 new cases. But compare those numbers to how many new cases Georgia reported daily only a month ago, and the difference is staggering. From May 23rd to the 30th, Georgia never saw more than 1,000 new confirmed cases in a single day. And late this afternoon, Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms reissued three administrative orders meant to help residents and businesses during the pandemic. Now extended until the end of August, water cannot be shut off because of non-payment. Cars parked in restricted city-owned areas cannot be towed or booted, and you cannot be charged penalties for unpaid city taxes. The mayor of Savannah now ordering people to wear masks inside retail shops, grocery stores, and other public places too, and those who refuse could face $500 fines. Mayor Van Johnson says he doesn't believe the city has any other choice. And Georgia is now on the list of hotspot states that qualify for New York's travel advisory. That means anyone traveling from the highlighted states on this map to New York are required to quarantine for 14 days. New York's governor says it's because these states all have significant community spread of coronavirus. Just as today's threat of storms is winding down, we're gearing up for another chance tomorrow, and that includes our entire area, a level one out of five threat for strong, gusty, damaging winds, heavy rain, small hail, and of course, lightning, always a threat this time of year. I want to walk you through the timing of this. This will start as a line of storms at our highest elevations right around the lunchtime hour that will strengthen and extend through the Gainesville, Canton, and a Polk County area, Cedartown. This is around two o'clock, and anytime you see a line of storms like this, wind will be the primary concern. We have seen so much rain over the past couple of days over the same areas. We have saturated soil. Any kind of wind gusts will cause some problems tomorrow afternoon. This extends through the Atlanta Metro and the I-20 area between 3 and 5 o'clock and south of I-25 to even 6 o'clock in the evening with it weakening pretty rapidly as we approach the sunset hour. We have another chance of storms on Thursday by the holiday weekend, Friday, Saturday into Sunday. Our rain chances remain fairly low and our temperatures go way back up. In fact, on Saturday, 4th of July, 89 degrees will be our high, but when you factor in the humidity, it could feel as hot as 95 degrees in Atlanta. This has been your personal news update from CBS 46 News, brought to you by West Shore Home, Atlanta's one-day bath remodeler.